I'm Dr. Liesel, and I'm a professor of conservation biology at Warren Wilson College in Asheville, North Carolina, and I'm the mammalogy science mentor for the Eco Explorer program at the North Carolina Arboretum. So I'm a mammalogist. I study mammals. What the heck does that mean? Well, a mammal is an animal. It's an animal. Most of them have fur, and that's sometimes what we think about, but they don't all have fur. One thing they all have in common is they all feed their babies milk. They're all really good mothers, and they feed their babies milk to give them a good starting chance at um, a life. So mammals are important for a lot of reasons. Uh, to be really self-centered for a second, you're one and I'm one, all right? Mm -hmm. So they're really close to home, literally. All your family are mammals, uh, and my family are all mammals. And so we also tend to have mammals as pets. I consider my dog and cat part of my family. They're also mammals. A lot of the species that we um, relate to most are mammals. Um, they are important food sources for a lot of things. So small mammals like squirrels and mice are food for birds of prey. They're food for snakes. They're food for all kinds of things. They also can be the things that eat other things. So bears, uh, raccoons, bobcats, those are all carnivores that are important in controlling populations of other animals. So they're really a big, important part um, of our ecosystems. So a habitat is a place where, where an animal gets everything it needs. It's where it lives, it gets its food, its shelter, its water. And its habitat is where it lives and does what it does best. So for example, for something like a bat, look at this tiny little mm -hmm. skull, a bat. A lot of our bats in the winter time, they live in caves and they hibernate there. So that's an important part of a bat's habitat. But in the summer, they're actually living in our forests and next to our creeks and rivers um, and feeding off of the insects that are there. So they might have two parts of their habitat. A black bear's habitat can be anything. Uh, it can be a lot of different things, particularly forested areas where it can find, it's a, it's a generalist, um, so it will eat pretty much anything from plants to animals to dead things, insects, and so it can live in a lot of different places. Whereas something like a bobcat um, is very uh, is very specialized and likes to be away from people. Its habitat would be largely in the forest away from people. So when you think about how we all, and kids especially, can help mammals, you want to think about it. It's easy to think about you're a mammal and what do you need? Food, water, shelter, warmth. So our first reaction might be to, oh, they need food, I should feed them. But in fact, all of these animals are really good at feeding themselves. And uh, we have a saying as, a, as wildlife biologists that a fed bear is a dead bear. That's because often when we try to give food to wild animals, it can mess up their way of being in the world. It can mess up with how they get food naturally. That can mean that sometimes then they get too pushy with people because they expect food or they can just get too close for people's comfort, or also they can sometimes then not know how to get food for themselves. And so um, that's really important to know that it's really best to not feed animals, don't, don't put out those piles of corn for deer or for the squirrels, as fun as they are to see. Um, it's better to not feed them. The other thing that kids can do to help mammals is help us understand more about them. It's so important. I'm one scientist and I have colleagues that are also studying mammals, but I can't be everywhere at once. And what's so great about the Eco Explorers program is you can help us collect usable data about the mammals in North Carolina so that we can better understand where they are, what they're doing, what they're eating. So all of that is so important. Um, so you can also help by helping scientists collect data. I like being a mammalogist because mammals always surprise me. Um, they're intelligent, small and large animals. Uh, they do have personalities, they have minds of their own, and so um, there are always things to figure out about them. There are puzzles. As a scientist, I love solving puzzles. That's what we do, and uh, there are so many puzzles to figure out, um, and it's, it's really fun to try and figure those out. All the answers are with the mammals, we just haven't figured them all yet, out yet. To study mammals, you know, in some ways it's a lot easier than other things uh, because there, we maybe think of a bear and it's a big animal and it's easy to see if you're where it is. But they're all very smart. All mammals tend to be very smart and, and 
they know what's good for them and they avoid people. So it can be a little bit tricky. Um, so we have to uh, use some good tools to figure it out. So sometimes we can use a camera trap. We can use a wildlife camera that uh, we can put out on a tree or a fence post and I can set it to take pictures uh, maybe when it's triggered so usually we do motion sensor um, motion sensitive cameras so when something walks by it will trigger it and take a picture we also sometimes need to actually to get the information we need about a mammal we need to have it in hand so we have some traps that we can use we use live traps like this these are just two different traps for different size animals this is a uh, plush stuffed pipe that's in here what we can do is set them open like this so we can open the door and have it set on a trigger it's set on a trigger back here there's a little plate so when something steps on it the door will close so we put tasty food in the back of the trap and put it somewhere we think there might be an animal open that trap put the food in and leave it, and we'll come back a few hours later and see if we caught anybody. You know, if I have one favorite mammal, it's not actually one I've seen in the United States. It's, it's a gibbon. It's a close relative of us. We're a great ape. They're actually what's called a lesser ape, but they're an ape. Um, they're, they have basically what we call them as mammalogists. They have four hands instead of two feet and two hands. They have four hands, and they're e they use all four limbs equally and they make this amazing noise. They, um, they live in the rainforests of Southeast Asia and they make this and it's the coolest sound. You're walking through the jungle and it just feels right. Um, and they're just spectacular. They're so fast and amazing. To do what I do, I had to go to a lot of school. I would say um, it depends on what kind of scientist you want to be. To be a citizen scientist, you, you don't need to. But to be a professor like me and a researcher, I did have to go to school. After I graduated high school, I went to another 10 years of school. I got an undergraduate degree in biology, and then I got a, a PhD in ecology and evolutionary biology. So it was a lot of school, but uh, it was very fun. I like school, so I've always liked science and math. So Eco Explorers, your next step is to learn more about a specific mammal and to tell us more about it in the form of a poster. So what we'd like you to do is Pick a mammal, draw that mammal, and draw it in its natural habitat. What does it need? Make sure that you show that habitat and all the things it gets from it. We talked about the bat that needs caves and trees and maybe insects to eat by a river. Those would be all things we would want to show in a poster about a bat. So think about what species you might want to draw and everything it needs in its habitat. And I look forward to seeing your posters.